Welcome to this special edition of Live Free. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Drenda Cassie. Is it possible to have peace in the midst of panic when others are throwing their hands up in fear? Does God still heal today? We're going to answer those questions. On today's episode, you're going to find a lady who has MS, an incurable, supposedly incurable disease, healed by the power of God. We know it'll encourage you. God's word is true in every situation. Live free. Live free. The church needs to tell people the truth and demonstrate it. People are waiting for the truth of God. They're waiting to see God's answer. They're waiting to see a good God. They're waiting to see answers for life's problems. But the Bible says if you'll resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Not just back up, he will run in terror. The Greek literally means flee from you because you have the authority. Amen? So how do you resist, resist the devil? You say no. You say no, that's not no. But you got to know what the word says. You got you to know what the word says. You got to know your legal rights. If you're in a court battle today, I guarantee someone trying to steal your house, you'd probably dig into some law cases to figure out if you have a right to that house or not. You'd probably hire an attorney that knew the law for you, and he'd represent you because you're convinced that this person trying to take your house is wrong, right? But Christians don't do that. They don't know what the Bible says. They don't know this is a legal, com a legal situation that they need to defend themselves like an attorney in a, ca in a court case. They go, oh my goodness, the situation's there, so it must be God. Because he has the power, he's not doing anything, he must have chosen it for me. Friend, this is ignorance. It's just ignorance. And Satan thrives in a place of ignorance. Listen, you have the authority. You have the absolute authority in this thing. In the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. Disease has to bow. You need to understand this. You have the authority. Now, you know, here's one thing that we need to talk about because you can have the authority like having a set of keys. Having a set of keys and have the title of that Corvette in your name doesn't mean you'll get to drive it. Because one day you got to sit in that Corvette and turn the key. Now, you can assume, you can reflect on how awesome it is that you own that Corvette like coming to church and say, praise God, I am a believer and Satan can't touch me. That's good. That's good. You've got the right. You've got the, you got the authority. But if you don't know how to turn the key, it's the same as not having it. And it's horribly if you think that God's against you. But even Christians that know that God is against sickness and disease and has anointed them, and they can quote a scripture if they don't know how to turn and exercise that authority, or if they don't take the time to do it, the effect is the same as not ever having it. Thus, I'll bring you the sad case of the day, the day I missed church, the first time in 25 years, because I was sick. It's a sad day, sad case. Your pastor was sick and had to skip church. Now, I'm telling you that because we've all done this. How many would say, you know, we just got busy and forgot to pray? Right? Life's busy, right? And so your pastor, I was busy. I mean, God had to correct me. He says, you're, you're, you've been busy. You've been distracted. A lot of things happening. And you know what? You didn't stop and pray. You ever said that before? Listen, we need to stop. Anyone say, we need to stop and pray? Stop what? When you say that, what do you mean? Stop what? Stop worrying, right? But by then it's too late. You see, when you say, look, we need to, come on, be honest. Anyone ever say that? We need to stop and pray in a situation? Okay. That's good. <laughs> That's good. But I'm telling you, you're, 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 you're late. Because when you say we have to stop and pray, stop what? Worrying. You see, at that point, typically, there's already a situation occurring, right? And you go, wait a minute, there's something's coming on. We got to stop because it's already, it's, it's moving. We got to stop and pray. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. But we need to understand what Peter said. Be alert and on guard. Your enemy roams around. Now, I'm a deer hunter. I like to bow hunt. Maybe you're not a deer hunter, but my illustration will work. When you bow hunt, you got to get close to the animal, right? And uh, if, you're, if you're upset because I'm talking about uh, ha having venison for supper, well, it's just the case. It's just, it's just how it is. But nevertheless, you know, when I'm hunting, I'm hunting. 
Now, I'm bow hunting. What that means is I'm alert. I'll guarantee you I'm listening to every twig, every snap of the leaf. I'm, li- I'm listening, right? I'm listening. And I'm looking around, right? Because it's a game of who sees who first. I mean, if the deer sees me first looking around, he knows what's going on. But if I see him first, then I can plan my, my plan. And I'm listening. So I hear a, twi- a twig, right? And I go, hey, that could be a deer. And I go, uh, oh, no, that's, uh, that's just a squirrel. That's not the deer. And you, it sound, then you listen a little longer. You know, wait a minute, that sounds like, yeah, that's a steady pay. That's a deer coming my way. Now, which direction is he coming from? Right? Which, I got to get ready. I got a plan. I, I can't move. He's maybe looking at me. I'll wait till he, I have his whole. See, if I wait for the deer to get in front of me for the shot, it's too late. Oh, wait a minute. He's right there. I, he'll, I can't get my bow up. He's looking at me. I mean, it's way too late. You're going to miss the opportunity if you wait for that to happen. So here's what happens. The Bible says be alert against your enemy, when you first have that little scent, that first indication, they're, wait a minute, they're, wait a minute, no, wait, wait a minute, what's that, vi- there's a virus going through town? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, we're going to stop, we're not having that now. No, we're not, we stop right then and go, in the name of Jesus, that's not happening in this house. We're not going to wait till all the kids are sick and then decide to lay hands on them, although that's good, there's healing in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about, we're going to stop that before it starts. But Christians are so passive, right? We're just passive. We're so busy. I'm telling you, if you want to win against an enemy who's traveling underground, who's sneaking around, you better not wait till he shows up to deal with him. I'm telling us how it is, right? Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.